we on Boss Talk 101. Yeah, we gon' talk, we gon' have fun. We be on fire, we be lit, lit. It's a unique hustle. Check it, check it, check it. This is Unique House. It's your boy, ECO, and I'm here with the lovely, amazing, official Miss Jamaica. What's going on? Not none, you know, my dad, all gone. I want to stop everybody right now. They take this time to go ahead and like, subscribe, follow us on all social media platforms. And I mean all, I mean all. I mean our Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Snapchat, you name it. We're on it. Just Google us, Boss Talk Podcast 101. We will pop up first in line. But if you want to see our visuals, you got to go over to our YouTube channel. Don't only hit subscribe. Check the notification because that's how you're going to get all our episodes and not miss out on not one of this fire that we've been giving out every day. Membership. That's how you can support the brand is join our membership. And under each and every video, including this one right here in the description section, there is a link that says join our membership. That's how you can support the brand because y'all see us on the street all the time and be like, man, how can we support y'all? We love what y'all doing. Keep it up. That's how you can support us. Join our membership. Thank you in advance. Man, check it, man. Listen, man. Hey, man, we got a jewel. We got a guy here today, y'all. He don't need no introduction. You got to listen. He here, man. Black and mild. Welcome to Boss Talk 101. Oh, you already know, man. It's going down. I believe that, though. <laughs> yeah, you already know. Like, you, you know what? I get real excited, man, when I, you know, when I get to interview, you know, one of those guys that a lot of people, I've been, you know, hearing music a long time. Right. Um, I really hadn't really tapped into nothing, but, you know, I'm a big man and fresh type cat, man. Let's yeah. just, you know, let's just, let's just, let's just start there, okay. you know. Um, but... I know you got a sound that you've been putting down. You feel me? Yeah. And so we better get all in your Kool Aid. We better figure out the flavor. Let's do it. It's about to go down, Miss Jamaica. Ladies first. Yes. Um. So you're from New Orleans. What part of New Orleans are you from? Uptown Third Ward. Uptown Third Ward. Yeah. Were you raised with your mom and dad in the same household? No, my pops, but my mama held it down for me. Oh, really? Yeah. That's dope. So you say you raised with your dad. My mom. Your mom, but your dad. So where was your dad during all this time? He was around, you know, doing the thing thing. So like, you knew him though? Uh, kind of, you know what I'm saying? You know, you know how it is. It's just one of them stories or whatever, you know. Was Papa Rolling Stone? Nah, he was cool. He was chilling. He just, you know, he just was doing this thing thing. You feel me? So not have, having your father in your life the way all the time, right. do you think that affected your life somewhat? My mama thought so at one point in time. Cause like every time I got in trouble, she always would bring it up. Like right. Daddy, woo, woo, woo. I didn't really care about all that, man. That was you know, she was doing that thing with me. So because I always say, cause being a mom now, as much as how we think that we're so stern on our our boys, we we trying to you know, cause we love our kids yeah. and we try to steer them in the right way. A man he can go to him and say A B C, and he jump he right on it. Right. A woman, she can say the same exact thing. I always say it's a tone of voice. I always say it's this y'all deep voice why y'all can get it and we can't. Right. It's a difference in reaction. So no matter how much sometimes women be say I'm I'm mom and dad to this child. There's no way a woman can be a mom and dad to nah, that child. I know I do know. She could be the best mother she can. Right. You know what I'm saying? I just had to be the best son I can, you know what I'm saying? And 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 be a man early in life, you know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? And do what I had to do or whatever to just make things feel comfortable for us, you know what I'm saying? But she held it down, my mama was a gangster. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I ain't tripping, you know? And you say you had to be a man early in life yeah. because of the absence of your father. Right. So um, do you, we were just talking about that for somebody else the other day and saying that sometimes that can rob a child of their childhood, not being able to enjoy, you know, and be a child and grow up too fast. Right. Do you feel like that? Nah. Nah. So it's not everybody it all, that it all depends on the environment you in. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, so I, I grew up in the in the area, you know, I got a big family. I got a lot of uncles, aunties or whatever. So my mama had help. You know what I'm saying? My grandmother was there for me. You know, my grand my great grandparents was there for me. So yeah. That's good. So you had a village. Yeah, I had a village. I was good. How yeah. many siblings? Oh Lord Jesus help us all. <laughs> we, that we many? A, yeah, we had a yes Lord. Wow. You heard me? Yeah, I believe And that. where you fall in all of this? Oldest, youngest, middle? I'm the, I'm the oldest. Okay. Yeah, I'm the oldest. I got a younger brother by the name of Aaron Yeah. And how old is the youngest? Um, He was like five years younger than me. Okay. So, yeah. Y'all you know, got to go look up my age. 
We're trying to figure it out. You better figure it out. Cause I ain't about to tell you. You hear me? How you come up with the name Black and Miles? Somebody gave me that name in uh, middle school, man. Like, like all the way back in middle school. I used to be ribbing a lot. I don't know if y'all know what that is. They call no. it roasting and all that. Okay. Yeah. So I was, I was, you know, I'm, I'm already dark skinned So they're gonna try to hit me with a dark skin joke. I was prepared for it. You play with me, I'm gonna catch you everywhere. It's going down. I ain't gonna stop. I still see people till till the day think I'm still the same. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I give them the runaround. It's going down. Mm -hmm. But so, how did they come at you, roasted like? I guess I must have looked like a black and mild one day because I used to wear this brown little overshirt over my school okay, uniform all the time. Okay. And I just must have just looked like a black and mild. You heard me? Hell, I had a bush. I was beaded. You know okay. what I'm saying? I wish I had a picture. That, that was, <laughs> oh, I was <laughs> hot, but don't get it twisted. You heard me? I'm from Uptown. I was hot, but you know what I'm saying? You know. you know what? A lot of people, you know, I've heard, you know, shout out to Kid Kid. You know, he had warned me about you Uptown cats. You know, you. He set tripping, uh, knife war. You had to look at for. Nah, cause there's certain niggas, you know, <laughs> they be they be set tripping too hard around this hole. <laughs> yeah, man, believe that. <laughs> like, like, what what is the the the, the pride? What where does it come from? Like, being in your neighborhood, what give you that oomph to say, man, we them ones? Our environment, man. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like uptown, our environment. What was. We was we was outside babies, dog. Like you know, what I'm saying we wasn't really inside like that. And some of us just, you know, like we had to be men early on in life. You know what I'm saying? And you know, some of us caught on quicker than others. You know what I'm saying? So, Birdman, he got a little bit of it too. Yeah. He said, "Let me take you to the neck of my woods and my hood." Up yeah. Down. What y'all doing? Like, y'all think y'all just really like gonna just sit here and play the New Orleans? Like it's a lot of parts down there in New Orleans. Yeah, you'll know when when, when <laughs> you'll know when some some cats grew up around OGs and had uncles and and it was around older. You know what I'm saying? Older guys that was doing their thing back in the day. So you know what I'm saying? You gonna carry that with you? You know what I'm saying? Wow. Yeah. Um, you started out rapping. Yeah. You thought you were fit to be a rapper? I wanted to be a rapper. Oh, I, could still, I could still do it, but it's my, my decision is I just want to produce. But that 16, when you first, what was the hardest 16 you ever spit? Say you ain't one. got to rap it, just say it. Give me one, two lines of it. I'm from Uptown. That's all you need to know. You heard me? That's, that that solidifies <laughs> everything right there. You heard me? <laughs> but you need that. <laughs> Y'all niggas hard, I'm man. I'm trying to tell you. Say so, so basically, when did you decide like I'm not gonna go with the rap thing? Was it very early on? Well, I'm, I'm, I, I, I've been around to different labels and messed around with you know different, a lot of different local CEOs, and I always just always wanted more and always wanted better, and I just knew the position I wanted to play in this music business. You know what I'm saying? And I just grew to it. Like I, I used to DJ. Yeah, yeah. I used to be a club promoter, club owner. You know what I'm saying? I went from DJing to hiring DJs. Wow. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. I just always wanted more. So you always evolve. Yeah, like yeah, in your evolve. situation, you, you get you come in passionate. Right, right. But as you get in it, God moves you into the position right. that you need to be it's in. It's definitely God, bro, because I like, you know, how my life moved up, I always got around somebody I could learn from. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Even like Vo, like that's my that's my brother. We the same age. But it, I, when I got around him, I learned, you know what I'm saying, a lot from him. You know what I'm saying? Wow. So Man, that's that's yeah. incredible, bro. Like the, to to have self awareness. Yes. I think that's really heavy. Right. Because what you explain is self awareness, really. Like how you supposed to respond to things yeah. tells you how much you know about yourself. Right. Because if you don't know much about yourself, you looking at everybody else to try to figure out who you are. Facts. Right. Facts. So that's that's dope. Let Let me ask you this: uh, You produce for Drake? Yeah. What song did you produce? Uh, I co-produced "Nice for What" and "In My Feelings." Okay, okay. Yeah. And and so how was that experience? It was dreamy, bro. Like I, I can't believe it happened. Like it happened so fast. And the thing that make it like that because both of the records went number one. But in one year. Like you know what I'm saying? How like do you get the back. call? What do you how did this even connection even take place? Did he look it on you know, did he get you put it on YouTube and he got a YouTube uh, so, how did it happen? So the first the first situation was with nice for what with my partner Phil Wawebe. He like uh, the dude Cortez was looking around in New Orleans for somebody that can you know add some bounce to one of his songs. And they contact Weeby during the time. Me and Weeby had a hot record called "Let Me Find Out." With uh, we had Juvenile and Snoop Dogg on it. 
And, you know, like the song was hot. It was ringing, you know what I'm saying? So I guess that made Cortez call Weeby like, wow. we need this. We need some of this bounce on this oo So, man, Weeby was working during the time, so that made Weeby call me. And, you know, it just went from there. That's heavy, bro. Yeah. Like I say, that's real heavy because at the end of the day, it don't happen. Yeah, it don't happen. It don't happen. A lot of people looking to try to do that yeah. very thing right there. And to be honest with you, the alignment just ain't lining up. You know, yeah. what I mean? the music is there. I mean, the, the effort is there. And some people that just never going to click. You know what yeah. I mean? So what what make you different when it come down to your sound? I'm, I stay true to it, bro. Like, I don't I don't I don't listen to other people's music to try to copy off them. You know what I'm saying? I just stay true to what I what I what I grew up to, what I know. You know what I'm saying? I was in them projects when they was doing them bounce songs and at them DJs and all that. You know what I'm saying? Like a lot of cats never experienced that. So they'll really never know the real you know what I'm saying? That's even like with New York cats. If y'all wasn't out there doing the times when they was really in them parks and, and them projects doing that thing, you'll really never catch the real essence of it. You know what I'm saying? Like I caught the real essence of my culture. You know what I'm saying? So Did you Okay, you you and Manny Fresh ever? Yes, indeed. Okay, y'all talking. Yeah. Okay, when you and Manny Fresh can't cut, when you seen him and his run, and him being in the cash money wave like he was, did that subside to him dealing with other things outside? Of, was it such a big brand that he wasn't he didn't connect with others well? Because I I didn't hear a lot of other outside stuff right. from him like I would have liked. Right. If I was the one saying, man, you got to go do this with them and them and them, right. I would have put him in so many different places and rooms. You know what I'm right. saying? Right, yeah, I know like, what you with it. Do you think that, that that brand and the way they developed that made the movement so big? Bro, it was... You I, understand what I'm saying? I Why think didn't that was, it go? I think that was a Birdman move. Like, okay. you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm going to keep I'm gonna keep this nigga grounded. You know what I'm saying? Like, but, you know what I'm saying? It's like, you know, Manny Fresh had a... I feel like he had like maybe a lot to do with the cash money movement, bro. Because like when I listen to the music and me being a creator, I can tell when some of the rappers probably felt lazy and, and he had to step up to make it what it was. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You can so tell. You, you can, can tell, feel it. bro. You can feel it. Yeah. He wasn't a hell of a rapper, but man, it was killing him on some of the fucking songs. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like you can tell you went back in that studio, I'ma sauce it up. You know what I'm saying? So what did you think about that project when him and Birdman did that one together? It was nice. It was nice, but you could even listen to it and tell it was more manny. Yeah, 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 you know yeah. What I'm yeah. saying like you know. So, but he gonna always oversaturate the situation because of who he is and yeah. the way he developed the music. But Birdman put him in that position though. You know of course, what I'm saying? of he course. He believed in him, so I respect Bird for that. Wow, man, you know I, I love the fact of how you your ear is different than mine. Yeah. You over there really like what? Who started the bounce music in 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 in, in New Orleans? In New Orleans. You know, you know, people say it's you know, the, the T T Tucker and uh DJ Herb or whatever, you know what I'm saying? I heard about other, you know, people before them too or whatever, but it was around the same time or whatever, you know what I'm saying? But you know. Okay. Oh, you just gonna let me run the whole thing? Well, you got it because I sure am the one to do that. Cut up, you know man. When, when it come down Jump to the in when you read it, it's she, all good. she act like she she don't have nothing to say because I get into this music mode and she she Jamaican. Yeah, have you ever well, thought about working with a Jamaican uh, 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 artist? I done work with a Jamaican artist. Who? Before. I done been a Jamaican. I got a couple to see. Of times. I got to do this whole thing. Hold he on, one second. Hold like on, one that. second. I got to do this whole thing. I'm in Jamaica now, just so you know. Uh -oh. I'm in Jamaica now. Now, let's go. Yeah. No, don't worry about it. I love just Jamaica. hold on. Right. Let's go. So, basically, you have worked with Jamaican artists. Yeah. Who yeah. was it? I don't, I don't even know his name. But he hit you up. Yeah. And you, how, did, how, how do you deal with a different culture in the music? You know what I mean? It, it's going to be a different sound. Uh, you know how they music sound. But right. does it, how did you deal with that? I'm a creator, bro. Like, I'm a dreamer. I grew up to music. So, like, if you me, you're going to know how to do it. Like, that's the best way I can explain it. You feel me? Okay, and the reason I ask you that is because there's different people coming in and out of the studio. Well, right. You have a studio. Yeah. When people come, how do you know what person you're going to make what sound with? What what determines that for you? What's the determining factor? Um, A lot of times, people don't know what they need, bro. Okay. Like they know they know what they want, but they don't know how to get it. You know what I'm saying? I feel like I was specially gifted to give you what you need, right? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, I, I feel so confident in who I am. I'ma just give you the yes, Lord. When you think about K 
Kale, he's sitting there very seat, man. And uh, we talked about uh, Snoop Dogg and when he first, you know, came over to No Limit right. and he came in the studio and he was basically, they was working together and Snoop was just standing there. And he say, man, what, what you want me to do? You know, that's what he was telling right. Kale. And it would throw it threw KL off because he didn't know that's the way he worked is what he said to right. me. Like, does that take on a factor how each individual is? You know what I mean? Yeah, like yeah. Snoop was. You're definitely him. gonna work with people because everybody work different, bro. Like you know what I'm saying? No, nobody work the same. You I think Snoop was used to working with you know with, yeah, with yeah, Death Row, Dre, with whoever he had been working with, and to come over that was a big transition yeah, for right. him. Right. How big is that when you've seen somebody work with another producer so long and now they end up dealing with black and mild? I'm gonna do me. My thing is through this here, what I you know, most artists come to me and they get stuck with me. They don't want to work with nobody else. That's how cold it is. That's how cold it is. I heard from a guy that said that when you when you deal with a person music, it's just because you do it with this person and the next person and that person, right. all these sounds are different. Yeah. How do you, because most producers come with the same sound. You can tell that producer, even Manny Fresh, right? by the way the drums and the way, how do you make yours different? It's just an aspect of life, bro. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like any business, like, you know what I'm saying? Like dealing with business, like you and your wife. You like doing the show with her, right? Yeah, heck yeah. All right then, like, you know what I'm saying? Like you can't do it with everybody. Like you, you're, gonna, you're just going to find out who you can work with. Like, you know what I'm saying? And you just keep, you know what I'm saying, keep it going. And that's just what it is with some of the artists. Some of the artists I click clack with like that. And like we can go. Some artists, I'm, you know, I'm not going to answer the phone for you no more. Wow. What did you think about Soldier Slim? Man, Soldier Slim was special. He was special, bro. Did you ever get a chance to talk with him I, or yeah, meet him? I met him one time. I met him one time at a uh, at a teen club one time or whatever, you know. But wow. I really never get a chance to work wow. with him like that. You know. I got a question. Go ahead. So... A lot of times when um, producers, who be holding back music sometimes when people be working on projects and stuff like that and you hear that, oh, this didn't come out. Is it the labels or producers? It be the artists, it be the, uh, it, it the, the relationships too. Uh, like if your relationship ain't good with a person and, you know, I don't know how if shit fall off or whatever, they can hold you back on that angle. Some artists feel like they're not ready to be procrastinating, you know what I'm saying? So... It'd be, it'd be different reasons or whatever, you know what I'm saying? Okay, because I heard, I remember interviewing someone before, I think it was Deli Ranks, and he was saying the reason why he became a producer, learned how to produce his own music, because he's also an artist, is because, you know, other producers be messing up their stuff or holding back their music, or, and it don't come out. Right. So that's why I was just trying to figure out. Yeah, everybody not go-getters, man. Y'all not about to do this interview and hold this interview. Mm -hmm. Y'all gonna let this out. They're exactly. You feel me? So, exactly. you know what I'm saying? Everybody don't have that same feeling. Mm -hmm. You feel me? That's just how it be. I had another question. I see you having tooth, gold tooth, right? Yeah. I know that's like a Louisiana thing, right? Or is it a New Orleans thing? It's just a little thing thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What's the meaning behind it? I just want, when you look at me, I want you to, you know what I'm saying, see something special sometimes. You know what I'm saying? Like, I ain't, ain't, ain't that I meant to do it or whatever. You know what I'm okay. saying? It's just, you know, it feel good. Okay. You feel me? Wow. Um... You know, like I said, I, I I definitely know that New Orleans is a different beast, man. When you, you hear about twerking, they, they claim that too. They claim everything, you know what I'm saying? Down there, why do you think the music is so, like, y'all got jazz, y'all got all kind of music, man. Like, why do you think that 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 that, that soul, that, 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 that music is so embedded? You know what I'm saying? We got some hardcore music levels, man. Like, you know what I'm saying? Our city built up. Like, you got to understand, when people die, a lot of people die in our city. We, ce we celebrate that shit. I know. You know what I'm saying? Like, we throw big, big old second line block parties. You know what I'm saying? It goes on for years. You know what I'm saying? We don't forget about you. Keep the culture alive. Like, you know what I'm saying? So. Wow. That's just something that we all grew up into. Like, it's just been going on. It's been going on, man. Yeah. Cash money, whatever you think, and it's just your opinion. Do you think there'll ever be a reunion like they be they, they, they talk about? As long as they're alive, yeah, man. It's a chance. Yeah, bro. Yeah, man. People people learn, man, and we grew. You know what I'm saying? Like, and they, they growing. Wow. I yeah. know What's, you work. Go ahead. What's the most memorable moment you've had in your career so far that you can mention? That stands out to you. Wow. Getting that big check. 
I'm gonna tell you the truth, me shit. That shit almost fucked me up seeing all that money. Shit, boy, I don't know who. When that thing come when, in, when that you... life changing moment hit, yeah, you can't forget about that. And I'm able to do more for my kids and my mama and myself. You know what I'm saying? And be able to see different parts of the world and shit. Like you know, that's 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 what it's about. That was... Is that your ultimate goal? Is to make enough money that you know you can have everybody set? Is that true no, happiness to that you? Ain't, that ain't my goal because like I ain't come from I ain't come from money. You know what I'm okay. saying? So I never really thought about it like that. You know what I'm saying? Like, I enjoy just seeing people I love and, you know what I'm saying, the people I love, seeing them happy. Okay. You feel me? Wow. Um, when it come down to it, you know, I know you work with Var. Like, how hard is it to work with him in the studio? Very. <laughs> you know, Very I just want to, like, well, what, what's, the, what's the complicated thing that, you know, besets you when you're dealing with a Var? Because one moment he'll love you and the next moment he'll love you. You get it? Okay, okay. Because he loved differently. <laughs> like, you know, if you don't get it, you, 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 you'll been a got into it with him. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, he's just fucking crazy. <laughs> no. Is he the most difficult person you ever worked with? Yes. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> Definitely. Man, and that's crazy because at the end of the day, that's the one that, that's the one you rock out with the most. Yeah, yeah. That's my dog, bro. Like, man, Vol, like, we, we click click. How did y'all meet? Bro. Like, because my thing with, like, he, he knew what he wanted to do. How did you guys meet? Oh, man. Um... I don't even remember, bro. It's been that long? Because we done been around each other for so much, so long, it just feel like we've been knowing each other for forever, bro. Like, you know what I'm saying? That's hard. That's hard. But, you know, like, through the music, like, we, we met through the music, whatever. And I don't, I don't, like, when I was DJing, he posted, been, I came on stage and tried to get me to play one of his songs, and I wasn't having that. And he used to taking DJ's equipment to lose while he fucking DJing in the really? middle. Really? Oh, yeah, he crazy, bro. He aggravated about yeah, it. Yeah, he aggravated. You ain't playing the music, you gonna pull all your shit all off, all, pull the speakers out, everything, push everything down. It's funny you talk about that, because that's what <laughs> <laughs> they talk about. On the show, Gil talked about Soldier Slim and him being in New York, and uh, Punk Master Flex wouldn't play, the, wouldn't play his music after he heard him play in Juvie. You know, uh, Juvie's song, he's yeah. like thinking that he was going to get his played and he wouldn't play it and it upset him. Yeah. So I know them New Orleans oh, boys yeah, get a little upset problem. by that music. It's deep, boys. Not, it's, it's deep. So they be the work, though. They're passionate about it, man. That, that, what do you think the the biggest, uh, what do you think the big, like, one, what what is the biggest song that, you, is it the Drake song that you've done thus yeah, that's far? that's definitely my biggest. The biggest. Because yeah. he's different, bro. Like, his stuff go number one soon as he come out. Yeah. All of it. Yeah. So I had two number one records <laughs> with Drake in one year back to back. Then I uh, I co-produced on another record for, um, with Beyonce. That record went number one. What? Yeah. What's the name of the record? To Break My Soul. You did that? Come on, man. I'm in love. <laughs> you hear this it. nigga, man? Let me get in there. Let me get it now. Let me get it now. Talk man, talk man. He yeah, black and mild, so he did that one. My name in there, bro. Credits in there. How did that. you even? She just picked it. Say, bro, it's just God, dog. How did you get somebody suggested it? Say, bro, just, it's just God. It's just God, dog. Wow, man, that's crazy, man. He got favor. A lot of favor. If you're doing Beyonce records, it, it's hard to get. And that was that was during the Jay Z. Yeah. That was yeah yeah that that, that hey they, it's been a lot of eyes is on that hey. in order for that to happen oh it's being screwed now we gonna do this one with him or this one with that I one. got the record with Megan The Stallion bro from the Queen and Slim soundtrack what the hell yeah that was like number thirty like thirty something on the on the billboards it was crazy how did that one happen you gonna give me some insight on well, any I, I got two managers bro like and they they do their job well bro uh, shouts out to J Will and, and Craig Bellis. How was that when you heard, you know, that you you and Megan was going to be locking in so? And do you know this beforehand? Because some people just make beats and then the person pick those beats. Or do you know this is going to be going to Megan? This is going to be going to so Beyonce? I stay true to I stay true to bounce music, bro. So I have I have a lane where where I done made it to the point where people going to come and look for that. Mm. So they they looking for that. Like so when I do when I do me, people coming to me for what I do. You feel me? Wow. And when yeah. they hear somebody else's song, I figure out that you did it and yeah. they like the work, they're going to come find you. Exactly. Wow, man. Just the, the people that you 
These names, these is multi platinum. These, this is nothing to play with. Yeah, hey, I got a record with my partner, Fred O'Bang. Fred O'Bang, I've been yeah. trying to get that nigga on my show, man. Yeah, like, right. let me know how they work out, my guy. I can hear it in my ears, like yeah. right now. Yo, Jizzle <laughs> came home. I got with Jizzle. We got. You like already about, got with Jizzle. Yeah, we got like about eight, nine records in, man. We, like before he went to jail, Vaughn had him in the studio already working with me. You feel me? So we was already working. Like he, the the day he went to jail, he was supposed to be in the studio with me. Mm. Yeah, that day. That day. That morning. Yup. And the boy, like I said, the, the the what's the difference in him then and now? I asked that question. The well, third, twelve uh, it's, years it's, it's later, a lot, bro. Like he got his head together now. You know what I'm saying? And you know, I I feel like he know what he want and and how to move now. You know what I'm but saying? But he was popping before he left. He had yeah, Ti. Yeah. Him and Ti were running tough before oh, he yeah. left. He was popping. I ain't heard him with Tip, but Tip don't be on that music like he was before yeah, he left. For me, he trying to do the Tip on the comedian thing, Tip yeah. right what's now. What's the difference in BG music? Back then, compared to now, though, because he's grown, uh, but how has he grown in his music? I feel like what BG at now, I feel like he better. Honestly, I feel like he better. He he more woke, he more alive. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I feel like he, yeah, he back hungry for it because mm. he came out and and it's like he don't want to stop. And producing music for all these. Um, big name artists, you don't get to meet a lot of these people, do you? Oh, yeah. So you've met Beyonce, you've met Megan, you've met I all of met these. I met Beyonce. Yeah, I, I talked to Megan. I met, I met Megan. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Does it really matter? Why would that check come? <laughs> it, it matters in a way because I don't, I like, you know, like I told my managers, I don't like just sending beat packs. You don't right. like that? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I did that. I don't like that. But like, when that I check wanna, come, though. Oh, yeah. when that, Yeah, that, I, ain't, I ain't mad at the check. <laughs> the check's going to keep coming forever. Do you, you know, think you, you, know can, you can, it's easier for you to um, make music for a person when you meet them and really vibe with them rather than just not knowing them? Yeah. Yeah. You can, because I feel like when y'all in a room together, you y'all going to get what y'all want. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Then, you know, just sending music off, you got to, I hope they fuck with it. I exactly. I hope they deal with it. You know what I'm saying? Like, I remember when I did the Drake record and, and I did it and we sitting in a room together, me, him, and Ford, and we listening to it and I'm like, I don't want to look at the nigga because if you don't like it, <laughs> I'm going to feel some type of way. You know what I'm saying? And when he was vibing, I'm looking out the corner of my eyes, and he really he vibing to the shit. So I'm like, yeah, I got his ass. So mm -hmm. you said the E40? Who'd you? No, Drake. Drake. Oh, yeah. you you seen him diving to it? Yeah, yeah. I was in the studio both times. With him. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Like, yeah. Oh, I, I flew to Toronto the second time. Like, so when I did the first record, you know what I'm saying? He was like, I'm gonna give you another opportunity. He seemed like a nigga that a nigga yeah. could could be cool with if yeah, he, he cool, if he let bro. you in. Yeah, you we, know, we, certain niggas won't let you in. Yeah, I didn't interview niggas that won't let you in. Then for, for the interview, I interviewed this one guy, and I'm not gonna say his name because Boss Talk will not do that. You heard me? But I interviewed him, and almost at the end of the interview, that nigga came like, "Damn, whatever you want to ask me." Right. But I was like, "Damn, I missed so much time." You know what I'm saying? Trying to break you out of that. That shell, you know right. what I'm saying? And I don't get that. That's why I love interviewing niggas from New Orleans. Right. They don't come in. They come in like me. Yeah. It's easy to interview niggas from New Orleans. I'm being honest. Yeah. Because right. they act like me. And I ain't even from no damn Louisiana. But it's the way y'all open up. It's right. the opening up part. I don't have to worry about it. Y'all come in like we ready to go. Right. You know what I'm saying? So I got a question about, um, okay, so you talk about Drake, that you've worked with Drake and stuff. You know, Drake having, you know, his beef with Kendrick Lamar and uh -oh. stuff like that. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Um, I, I, my question is, since you're into the music, do you prefer for artists to do like a quick diss to an artist or do you prefer for them to really sit down and give you quality beef, quality lyrics, even although it's a beef? See, bro, them, them two dudes on different planets. Like, they, they on some, you know what I'm saying? Whatever happened to just fuck you, old bitch ass nigga. You know what I'm saying? Like, it ain't that no more. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, they on some other shit. Like, you know what I'm saying? Uh, I don't know, bro. It's yeah. crazy. To me, like, I feel, I don't even feel like it's no winner because it's like, I just feel like they just doing doing something different. Like they they trying to help hip hop out. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. they bringing it back. When well, you read them comments, everybody's saying Drake winning compared yeah, to Kendrick. I'm saying Kendrick winning too, and I'm, really? I'm I'm more of a Drake fan, not just because I work with him. You gotta understand right. Drake like kind of 
Uwapped in New Orleans, like you know what I'm saying. He was with Young Money, you know what I'm saying. And that's right. You know his first mixtapes and shit, like was like ah New Orleans, you know right. what I'm saying. So, you know I'm, that's why I'm more of a Drake fan. You mm. feel me? But what do you think about like like when you see J Cole come out and then he he pull his his beat his his song back and say I didn't mean it. I hated that, bro, because like I didn't mean he, it. He the man, bro. Like you know what I'm saying? Like I don't want to do it. He too highly respected for what he doing. I just hated that he pulled out like that. Like I should wish he would have never done. You don't know? Let me tell you what it made me feel like. It feel like when Trey said, "Let me out the car on boys in the hood." Man. Oh, that's <laughs> bad, bro. That's bad, bro. I'm just telling you that. Was, yeah. Let me out. Yeah. You remember that scene? Yeah. Uh, and I don't know, you know, I seen it coming when he was fighting there. You remember yeah. when he was fighting there and that girl? He got him some, though. Yeah. But, but <laughs> yeah, but at the end of the day, you know. It looked crazy. Yeah, it looked crazy. That's what I'm saying. Right. But, you know, like I said, you, 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 one of the guys who, what can we expect, you know, coming, you know, in. I'm trying to get Master P back in the fucking boot, man. He won't get back in there. He's so stuck on all his all his other business, but Master P is a you know I've been working with him since you know I got with No Limit in like yeah you got yeah you got with him. What didn't you come after? After after, after KL, 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 KL yeah yeah. How was that transitioning into that? It was it was cool man it was cool. How did you I, I how, the people KL, was not the people was not used to dealing with nobody else now? Yeah. Come on now yeah it was. Who was the first artist that you dealt with after this whole transition transpired and and, and Beats by the Pound walked out? What you mean, like when they no left limit? and then you came? Who was the first one? Well, I still came years later. Like I came like damn near what? That was in two thousand two or something. Two thousand one when they ended. And when did you come? And I came like two thousand fourteen. So it was. Oh, like, so it was years later. Yeah, yeah. It was so they was they, they had adapted, super yeah. adapted by this time. Right. But who did you work with first? That's all I'm trying to get when, out of. With no limit. Yeah. Um. So I was called out to work with his daughter, Symphonie. Okay. Uh, Jug it, my boy. You know, Jug it. Yeah, shout out to you know Jug it, man. You want to call, answer my phone call, bro? Like, he what you know doing, already, man? He what you know doing? Rather than told P was up or whatever <laughs> about me that I rap, I produce or whatever. He already laid it down. So once I finished that up or whatever, so P was like, "You ain't about to go nowhere. I want to hear what you got." What I would do? So I played a few songs, few beats, and he was like, "Shit, you know what I'm saying? What's up? Shit, I was like, shit, ain't nobody else trying to give me an opportunity. I'm about to fuck with that." So, you know, and that was just history from now. Wow. Um, do you got, go ahead? So, okay, so this question I got right here it says, in today's fast paced technology world, how does your transition impact your music production process? Read that again. I got a process. <laughs> me too. I'm, I'm trying to get me too. Like, you hear me with the T.I. Like, word you know, and all that. Like, it felt like I was in school. Yeah, yeah she just like, hit me with the ooh -ah. Go again. <laughs> it says, in today's fast-paced technology world, how does your transition impact your music production process? Well, I'm an old, I'm, I feel like I'm an older producer and... But my thing is, is my is my work ethic. It's the drive in me that keep me going. You know what I'm saying? And I work with, I still work with young artists. You know what I'm saying? And I, I deal with young artists or whatever. So, and and the, the role I want to play in this music business as well. Like you know what I'm saying? I want to play the CEO role and the, you know, the person to really like get behind the music. You know what I'm saying? Like mm -hmm. not just make the music, but also on the other side of it. You know what I'm saying? So. That just keep me in it, keep me going, yeah. Wow, man, like I said, man, you you dope, man. Like, I can't wait, you know what I'm saying? What, what, how, how is it working out with these these two cats? I, I just had on the show, man. Uh, I've been looking at y'all music. I just had them, man, I had it on there. I had it on my mind, man, 504 Detroit and, and CPO. I just call them Snipe, but yeah. like, like how how is that, working with them on these new projects? I always, man, Detroit been working for a while, man. Like, man, him, that, I've, I've been fell in love with his sound and, and the type of person he is or whatever, you know what I'm saying? So I just I just straight grabbed him like yeah. I'm fucking with you out the gate. No diddy. <laughs> <laughs> say bro, I ain't trying to don't make me say that. See what I'm saying? See what I'm doing? Don't put me in there. Don't make no, me you, say that. He, he made me say that, dog. Bro, I ain't gonna say and that and shit. You know, for you to even say that, you know. That nah, that and, and, and I gotta ask you the question. He brought it up. <laughs> like, 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 uh, do you how do you feel like Diddy will be after Four years from now, is he gonna be okay in this situation? I want, I want to see him okay, bro. Like because I grew up to, I grew up on Diddy, bro. Like, you know, like who don't want to have the success that Diddy had, especially being a black man. You know what I'm saying? Coming from the hood, you know what I'm saying? Like, 
you know, like, but I understand too. At the same time, he had money for a long fucking time, and fuck, what what can you do? Like when you done had everything and got everything, what the, what the fuck else well, is next? Well, there's certain things you can't do. Well, that's true you know too. What I'm saying? Certain things you cannot but do. Yeah, we all done did shit. We don't want nobody to know about. I got a lot Listen, of skeletons man, in my closet. Take Playboy. that. Take that. Took on a whole new meaning. I'm gonna deal with my situation with God. Yeah, but some if, shit you just gotta let just deal with God don't with it. Spill into the streets. You got yeah, to watch you what's going spill, on. You let it spill, then you get caught. You gotta pay the crime. You gotta pay for the crime. You got caught. It's a lot of people nervous now. Yeah, you yeah, seen yeah. a lot of people hanging out at the parties with Diddy. That come with Ben's it. it. Fonsworth Bentley. Uh, it was a bunch of. You them. find out what I did, yeah. boy. No. <laughs> Yeah. I'm going to jump off the bridge. It's going down. It's over with. I think I that's quit. all of us in a sense. Yeah, all of us. Yeah, we all yes, Lord. Yeah. You know I mean? <laughs> that's indeed. Yes, indeed, man. Like, I, I really, like I said, I want to I wanna see him uh, really, uh, I want to see him. Yeah. I want to see him come out of this situation. I want to see him come I out I mean, too. you know, I, I, I'm not a, a guy that's going, I'm not going to just, I'm not going to just say he's guilty all, yeah. all the way. Because, our people already been through a lot, bro. I don't like talking to nobody. If we go to talking about that situation and y'all just bad out the man, hating on the man, and he ain't even fucking. You wasn't doing it when he, he had wasn't this. even guilty or nothing. Like you just they straight up judging yet. the man. Did they, did they yeah. get him on anything they yet? Ain't got him on nothing yet. It's all conspiracy type shit. You know what I'm saying? So you know, like leave that shit alone, man. Let it go, man. Yeah, boy. Let, let, yeah, let them folks stop get. hating on that man. Let let them because they already been waiting to hate. Yeah, bro. Yeah, because yeah. he filing documents to get things dropped bro, right now. We lo we losing too many. You know what I'm saying? Like, come, come on, on bro. Come on now. Hey, that's man. the whole game, man. So, did you you think you gonna get P back in the studio? Yeah, I'm gonna get him back in there. It's going down. I bet you I get him back in there for a couple of more songs. You gonna get your two out of them at least? I'm, I'm gonna get at him. least. I'm gonna get him. I'm gonna get him. I'm a, I'm a AI his ass or something. We gonna, <laughs> that's my dog, bro. Right? That's my partner, dog. He who my partner. You, who haven't you worked with that you would love to work with? Baby Fix, Teddy really? Riley. Uh, Shout to Teddy Riley. Jam. I can't talk. see Michael Jackson because he's he gone, gone, bro. You know what I'm saying? But slow jam. Yeah, you know. What Shout I'm saying? out to Teddy Riley. I heard you in Dallas right now. Yeah, Teddy man. Yeah, so he right, might be bro. in the city. You might can bump into him. He here. Boy, I bet. I bet not. He's <laughs> going. Then we gonna be making music on the spot. You think the old school R and B can come back? I'm into that. I'm I'm stuck in the I'm stuck in the late eighties, early nineties. Like, I love it, but really a lot of these younger kids they don't they don't because listen if to they that. They don't they don't want to be any and people don't like being any feelings no more, bro. That's like the biggest thing right now. Nobody don't want to. You know what I'm saying? Their feelings for the young kids is pain, drill music, pain music. That's yeah, what they, they look at being yeah, in their feelings. They don't want no, they ain't no love no more. Ain't no love no more. Yeah. You're right. Top three artists all time, dead or alive. Two, top three? Or yeah. Any genre. Top three artists. Of all time, dead or alive, any genre. Michael Jackson first. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta say Mike. What about? Gotta see Mike first. What about, you, you don't think Drake better than Mike? Huh? <laughs> I just Drake? heard a guy that was on this show. Drake wouldn't even say he better than Mike. Of course, Chris Brown wouldn't either, but it's Nobody people out here. Was. It's people out here saying it. Man, look to, to you got pray for him. That's all. <laughs> oh, who you got number two? Uh number two. I could put Drake number two. Okay. See that's hard. Yeah. And number three? Tupac. Tupac. Yeah, y'all both wrong. Y'all need to move. Y'all need to move. Is he the Pac or Drake out of them two? Like, I, I could put. I, yeah, because you're saying that Drake better than Tupac, right? No, he can't be saying that. He put Drake nah. as number no, two? He yeah, he better than Tupac. What? Hey, you man. see that picture right there, man? Don't you. <laughs> So Pac set the Pac I feel like Pac set the ball like you ain't no excuse no tattoos or nothing for Pac how Pac was when he died 25 24 25 come on he set the ball has Drake been in a movie yet huh yeah he started off in TV he done been in a movie oh yeah 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 yeah. when he was younger but he ain't like no Pac come on not in no movie no not in no movie lyrically whole movement lyrically not mess with no Pac you gotta gotta look at lyrics first of all how lyrically he is and the type of music. But I'm not made. gonna argue with you, Black and I, I ain't you tripping. Now you wrong for that, bro. I'm, I'm gonna I'm keep it real. And shout out to PMC, man. I'm a PMC fan for all. That. I'm a Texas nigga. All. Yeah, I know. And they he from Louisiana no because they not play from Louisiana. But Pimp was born. He was born in Louisiana. These niggas don't know. Yeah. Shout like out to the Pimp, man. Shout, shout out to the Pimp. R.I.P. to the Pimp, man. These yeah. niggas out here. I knew all this. I could have got a chance to work with Pimp too, bro. Yeah, Pimp hard, bro. Definitely. Yeah, man. Thank you so much. What's your favorite PMC song? Um, it's a bunch. 
Well, let me see what his favorite is. What is that pimping record? Which one? I think it's the pimping record. I can't think you know of the name of it. It's, it's on the tip of my tongue. I can't think I of it. I can name a bunch of them. Yeah, he's got a bunch of them, Quit bro. Quit hating the sound. Come on, bro. You lost your spot Come when on, you man. with Pop CD Flop. You ain't hot. Come on, man. The game been good to me. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Yeah, Pimble Series, bro. Pimble Series. I like Scarface too, though. Ooh. Like, I'm a Scarface fan. That nigga fan. tonality dip. Did you see yeah. that tiny tune? That tiny dip? Tiny table. Face was, face was like. That tiny dip was hard, wasn't it? Face was, fit, to me, like, because I, how I grew up on him, I felt like Face was like one of the first fucking make you think type rappers to me. Like, wow. Yeah, he was real deep or whatever. Man, Black and Mile, I hope we did you justice, man. This boss talk, man, where the boss is oh, talking. Oh, yeah, man. I'm, I'm, in, I'm tuned in, bro. You like, be watching I, boss I, talk? I, I, what? Yes, indeed, boy. I can't go I can't go a week without watching what's going on. It going down, ain't it? It be going down. Y'all be doing y'all thing, man. man Shout out to y'all, man. We bro. We just trying to do this for the culture, for the right. South, bro. I want to come back because we only you talk about 30, 40% Listen, of the shit that's with the me. Deal. Here's the deal. Yeah, yeah you be in it time. Right. Once you hear grab my number. Hit me up, nigga. I mean, take, watch what I do. Or we pulling up in New Orleans. But it makes right. it for the, the second show to be better because once our viewers start get used to seeing you it's and knowing down. your story, we can't give down. them everything yeah. in one shot. No, right. you're not going to be able to give them everything, but it's a lot to talk about, man. Yeah, it's a lot, it's a man. Lot. I just want to give a shout out, you know what I'm saying? You know, Big Frida's still working, you know what I'm saying? I produce for Big Frida Big all Frida. day. You know, that's the, that's the top dog in the bounce music. That's you know hard. And you know the, the project I'm working on with Detroit and Snipe, grown man business. Or yeah, whatever. grown like, man we, business. We're rolling with that right now. That's crazy. Yeah, and and and, and it's uh, some R and B ish. Yeah, uh, that's where I'm at with it, bro. Like I'm I'm a grown man, so you know I don't want to keep always making rah rah music all the time. Like right. I want to I want to like ride to some of the shit that I make. What you do, country? You know what I'm saying I do country, yeah, but I had to do it my way. Already, oh, it's yeah. getting I more popular. See, yeah. I would love to see what your way would be. I'll cut up on him. What? <laughs> oh, <Uh-oh. laughs> uh oh, yeah. Man, Lead thank up. you so much, Black and Mouth. We love you, baby. I love y'all too, man. It's Shout going out. down, man. Boss hey, one of the bosses talk, man. Already, uh oh. Hey. hey. <laughs>